Actually, there are so many things in the Quran which lends itself to scientific discoveries and proving of creation. For example, you see, if you meet one of these young men or learned people, Baby, you can call me a superman. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Lungu back with another reaction video. And today I'm going to be reacting to that at his best part 11. But before I get into the video, a big shout out to everyone that's been showing us love and has been so kind throughout all this YouTube journey and getting us to 9,000 and giving us suggestions each and every day. Thank you so much and we love you guys and get into this video Like I said, I'm going to be reacting to Didat at his best part 11 without wasting any time. Let's get into the video You pay for it Good or bad you will be rewarded or you will be punished Nobody pays for somebody else's sins in Islam the way to come right with God is to believe that there is God and listen to his commandments what he tells you to do, you do, you are on a good wicket. You are in his good books. You listen to his commandments. He says, you shall worship none but me. But he said, no, no, I'll worship you through this man, or through this monkey, or through this elephant. He said, look, I don't want it. I want you to worship me and me alone. But he said, no, 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 you see, this thing helps me. This makes easy for me. God says, I don't want it. So in other words, in Islam, you believe in God and carry out his commandments. And if you have made a mistake, you repent. Repent means you turn back from whatever you have done. And this is exactly what the Bible is teaching. In the book of Ezekiel, we are told, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Whoever sins, he will perish. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Whatever the good thing the good man does, he will get the benefit. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn, repent, come back from all the sin that he has committed, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. That is Islam. Same. There is no change. In the laws of God there is no change. You must pay for your sins, I pay for mine. Nobody can pay for your sins. And nobody dies for your sins. And Christ didn't die for anybody's sins. He didn't die. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Didat. Uh, I know nothing about the Quran. All I wanted to know was just the Quran at the, at the epic of creation when, when the Lord God created heaven and earth like Genesis or not. There are so many things which are common between the Jews, the Christians and the Muslims. This, the Bible speaks about God creating the heavens and the earth in six days. The Quran says God Almighty created the heavens and the earth and all between in six days. Right. So there is a common denominator between what the Jews believe, the Christian believes and the Muslim believes. But it doesn't go right through and through. You see, it doesn't. The concept that is given about God, the Quran doesn't confirm. That when Adam and Eve, when they act of that forbidden fruit, they became aware of their nakedness. And they heard the footsteps of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day you know like a mighty big giant boom boom like mighty king kong walking in the cool in the garden in the cool of the day so adam went and hid himself away in the bushes i'm giving you reference from the bible book of genesis he hid himself away in the bushes so god comes and stands where adam was a few seconds before and he scans and he asks he shouts, he says, Adam, Adam, where art thou? Creates the impression that God didn't know where Adam and Eve were. Or he was playing hide and seek with Adam and Eve. Adam, Adam, where art thou? So Adam peeps through the bushes and he says, I'm here. He said, why are you behaving like this? 
He said, no, I'm naked. He said, how do you know that you're naked? You were not supposed to know. So, he says, you see, you have been eating of the fruit. So Adam says, it's a woman that thou gave us to me, she made me to eat. And you woman, she said, it is the serpent that beguiled me. Now all that thing is not in the Quran, it's not in Islam. This is all in the Bible. Thank you. There are so many things in the Quran which lends itself to scientific discoveries and proving of creation. For example, you see, if you meet one of these young men or learned people, those who say that there is no God, it's one of the answers to the previous question. Huh? Now it depends on the type of person that you are meeting, you can use the type of facts that you have at your disposal. You meet a man of learning, a doctor, a professor of astronomy, biology or whatever, and yet he says that there is no God. And when you ask him, according to his learning, the origin of this universe, how did this universe come into being? And that person will postulate, he's going to start explaining to you that you see millions and millions of years ago, billions of years ago, this universe was one piece. And there was a big bang. And out of that big bang, that explosion, this universe came into being and things started moving in space and they have been ever since moving at a regular pace. So that type of a person, we might ask, he says, now, where did you get this idea from? When did you learn this about the Big Bang? He said, no, yesterday. Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. 50 years is only like yesterday. So he discovered that there was a Big Bang according to our astronomers, according to our physicists, and out of that this universe came into being. So he said, you see, an illiterate man in the desert, 1,400 years ago, he couldn't have known that, could he? So he says, no, never. So he says, well, listen. Now we quote the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, Awalam yara lazina kafaru. Do not the unbelievers see? These atheists, these agnostics, those who say that there is no God, can't they see? Awalam yara lazina kafaru. Anna samawati wal arda kanat aratkan. That the heavens and the earth were joined together as one unit of creation. Fatak nahuma. And he split them asunder. And the biologist, you ask him, where does life originate? He said, in the sea, in the water, in the mire. Where did you get that from? He said, no, it's our discovery. When did you make the discovery? He said, yesterday. Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. So an illiterate man in the desert, he couldn't have known this. He said, never. Well, listen. Allah tells us through Muhammad, He said, min al kull shayin hai. And he has made from water every living thing. Will you then not believe? You atheist, you agnostic, you man of science, will you not believe? He said, look, where did Muhammad get all these ideas from? Plant life, animal life, vegetable life, vegetable, every life, he says, has got pears. 1400 years ago, in the desert, this man is talking. Where did he get the idea from? He says, Subhana lazi khalaq al azwaja kullaha. He says, Glory be to God who has created mates of everything. Imma tumbitul ardu, of that which the earth produces. Wa min anfusikum, and from among yourselves, of the animal kingdom. Wa mimma la yalamun, and of the things that you know not. Male, female, positive, negative. He says, created mates of everything, of the things that you know and of the things that you don't know. So these are for people with eyes, with sins. They can see that this is not the work of Muhammad. An illiterate man in the desert could never have been able to utter these things. It is from the source of creation who has been giving it to him. That this is the book of God. Read this book with an unprejudiced mind. If you haven't got one, I can present one to you if you haven't got it. This is an English translation of that book, the Quran, with an index, anything that you want to know. You want to know about God, open G, God, more than 140 different references. That you say, I can't believe in God. So he reasons with you. This God of the Quran doesn't say, I'll fix you up and I'll twist your nose and I'll, you know, I'll put you, pull out. No, no, no. He says, Awalam yara lazina kafaru. He said, how can you not believe in God? He says, 
This is كيف تكفرون بالله? So how can you not believe in Allah? وكنتم أموات seeing that you were non-existent, you were dead, and He brought you into being. ثم يميتكم and will cause you to die. ثم يحييكم and will bring you back to life again. ثم إليه ترجعون and to Him will be your return. So if you start reasoning and you see how true the statements are that you were non-existent. You, I, everybody, non-existent. The men of science will tell you that this earth was a molten mass. Billions of years, you know, there was nothing on this earth, no life. The thing was all boiling, boiling, boiling. And the vapors went up and came down, and the vapors went up and came down, and over a period of millions of years, it started to cool. And then life started to germinate, and so on and so on. So there was a time when mankind was non-existent, and God brought you into being. Very true. And now you're going to die. But that is not the end. That you'll now, there is something we knew, which is other than the body, that real you, now that real you, which is the driver of this body of yours, will be made to account for your actions. It's only natural that this person, like Hitler, look, he got away with it. He incinerated six million Jews. On account of him, 40 million people died in the Second World War. He's just going to get off spot free. If he says, no, I don't believe, and there's nothing there on the other side, that means he's free, finish. No, 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 he will have to account for his deeds. Everyone will have to account for his or her deeds. It is a natural, you know, sequence of our attitude and behavior. And this book explains all that. If you haven't got one, this book is yours. If you haven't got one. You got it? This was a very, very nice message. Um, it's very similar to um, that at his best part, um, part 10. This was the very, very, I think, continuation of it. So I really don't have much to say. Good message. I loved everything he said. And I wouldn't agree more with whatever was presented through this video. One thing that I picked up something new from the other video we did was the fact that he said, when you want to read this book, the Quran, read it without a judgmental mind. People are so fond of all I say, learning, reading actually gives you knowledge. So when you want to learn about religious things, be it Islam, be it Christianity, be it whatever religion it is, take it upon yourself to read their books. There's always something in the books that you learn or that you get from there. And when you go to these books, don't have a judgmental mind. These people are evil, I don't want this. Or these people are evil, they just want to look good. That shouldn't be the case. Have an open mind. An open mind will always learn more, will always have, will always see the good in something, I guess. Or be quick to just learn something. Otherwise, like I said, the message was very, very amazing. Nothing else to say. Everything was said by him. And the fact that I think we touched on this thing of praying for another person's sins, that just doesn't make sense. Saying it even doesn't make sense. And it will never happen. So yeah, no one has ever prayed for anyone else's sins. I feel like they have, but then in the actual sense, no one on Judgment Day or any other day when it comes to the end of the world will pray for another person's sins. Not happening. So yeah, I love this video. I don't know what you guys will feel about this video let me know down in the comment section below and let me know what you feel about um my reaction and yeah don't forget to give this video a thumbs up share it with friends and of course don't forget to subscribe see you in my next video you